Hey, what is going on guys? Worst Trends here. Freddy Fazbear is awesome. Now, I just want to start off this video by saying I'm not that kind of FNAF fan. What the hell? I'm this kind. Pretty shocking, I know. It's not like there's anything in the background of these videos that would tip you off to that. Oh well. I gotta say though, one of my favorite things about the FNAF series has got to be the animatronics. I mean, there's so many cool ones. There's Freddy Fazbear. Oh, I forgot the rest. But have you ever noticed that there's actually tons of animatronics that just never go explained? Like, MatPad just loves to ignore certain animatronics. So that's why in this video, I want to go over every single animatronic that people just hate talking about. First off, I want to go through every animatronic and discuss which ones are going to be on the list. First, the main five animatronics are easily taken off this list, as well as the withered variants. The puppet will also be taken off. The security breach animatronics still have some secrets, but I really don't want to talk about them because I hate that game. Next, we'll take off Springtrap, Scrabtrap, and the VR exclusives. Fred Bear and Spring Bonnie, BB, JJ, DD, most of the FNAF 6 characters, the main sister location gang. So that leaves this roster. I'm taking the toys off for two reasons. One, they are extremely popular and get tons of videos on their own. I can't say anything that hasn't already been said. And that leaves this group of really talked about robots. I assume the reason most of these aren't talked about is because they're hard to explain, so I may have put more food on my plate than I can chew. But screw it. Let's kick it off with the first animatronics on the list, the shadows. I already regret this. <laughs> The shadows have been some of the biggest mysteries in this entire series since their introduction in FNAF 2. These guys are so weird, and honestly, I don't even know if I should be grouping them together right now. Besides their names, these two animatronics are actually really different. Shadow Bonnie actually has more in common with Shadow Dee Dee than Shadow Freddy. Shadow Bonnie and Shadow Dee Dee's official names are a string of random letters, but Shadow Freddy is just called Shadow Freddy. Shadow Freddy is the only one of the three that actually has damage on it. The others are perfectly intact. Bonnie and Dee Dee are black and gray, but Shadow Freddy is purple for some reason. Shadow Freddy is the only one to appear in more than one of the first six games outside of minigames. They have an easter egg appearance in FNAF 3. Then in the questionably canon FNAF AR game, Shadow Bonnie is apparently made out of Dark Remnant. But Shadow Freddy is nowhere to be seen. If they're made out of Remnant, then what are the Phantoms? Because there's also a theory for that. So these two groups could actually be related because they're both very ghostly, but I don't know. And then there's the question if Nightmare has anything to do with them because he's the only other shadow-like animatronic. Who may also be related to the shadows in the FNAF 4 minigame, they may also be the inspiration for Shadow Freddy and Bonnie in the Crying Child's Dream. But that theory completely throws everything else out the window. And speaking of the minigames, why does Shadow Freddy lead you to Afton and why can Shadow Bonnie glitch through reality? Why are the animatronics recolors of these specific animatronics? Why does Shadow Bonnie crash the game but Shadow Freddy doesn't? Why on earth is Nightmare called Shadow Freddy in FNAF 4's files? Nothing makes sense. I just don't know. But I'll try. So one of the earliest theories made to explain these two were that they were the ghosts of the employees who died in the Springlock suits. But if that's the case, then these two should be treated with equal importance, right? But they're not. Shadow Bonnie seems to have a lot more importance than Shadow Freddy, and a lot more power too. Their appearance in FNAF 3 and AR show that. Well then, what else is there? Well, Shadow Bonnie must have something to do with the toys, and Shadow Freddy must have something to do with the originals. And the fact that these two are often separated in pretty much everything, we can kind of look at them as their own things. Something interesting is that Shadow Bonnie appears in UCN, but Shadow Freddy doesn't. In fact, Shadow Freddy doesn't appear after FNAF 3 at all. Shadow Bonnie, however, has minigame cameos in every game after FNAF 3. Okay, in FNAF AR, we know that there's a Dark Remnant and Light Remnant. Remember, Remnant and Agony are not the same. Agony is what haunts objects, as we see in Fazbear Frights. Remnant, however, is different. If you take an object infested with Agony and melt it down into a liquid, you get Remnant. As far as we know, Agony is the only emotion strong enough to do something like this. However, there may be an emotion on the opposite side of the spectrum that can do the same. As lame as it is for me to say, love may just be the strongest emotion in the FNAF universe. In the Stitch Wraith story in Fazbear Frights, we see that Agony from Afton and Baby can be directly combated with extreme positive emotion. Near the end of the story, when Detective Larson gets infected with Afton's remnant, the Stitch Wraith uses its powers to magnify an extremely happy moment in Larson's life to stop the infection. Back to Golden Freddy. We know that the Stitch Wraith is pretty much a metaphor for Golden Freddy. 
Both of these animatronics have two spirits in them. One kind, the other bitter. The Stitch Wraith is able to use positive emotions to stop negative ones. But the negative emotions can be combated, but not destroyed. What if, bear with me, Shadow Freddy is a manifestation of the agony of the original murders? Think about it, once the original children's souls are set free, Shadow Freddy stops appearing. The fact that they weren't in UCN says to me that Shadow Freddy does not have a soul. Shadow Freddy is the leftover agony that didn't cling to the animatronics when the children were murdered. The agony had stuck around and haunted wherever and whatever was nearest to the children's souls. And when the children are set free, the agony fades because the children are no longer in pain. As for Shadow Bonnie, genuinely no clue. Let me know in the comments what you think. Side note, I don't think Shadow Dee Dee is important at all. I just think she's a spooky little thing for 5020 mode in UCM. Another side note. I'm pretty sure a few of you have pointed out the Pizza Plex story Help Wanted. So if you don't know, that story basically tells us that the first four games aren't canon. What I think this story means is that the major events and characters in these games are still canon, but the story is just trying to tell us not to get hooked on some smaller details that don't fit. So it's possible that Shadow Freddy just isn't canon at all. However, we don't know for sure. Next animatronic, please. See, this is what I'm talking about when I say smaller details. In the first four games, there are just a ton of things that don't fit our current understanding of the series. The endos are just like that. There's no real reason these things should be able to move at all. This is why the Help Wanted story is important. It's basically telling us that these things don't matter and not to worry about them. And that's all I have to say about these guys. I honestly feel pretty bad for the Phantoms. Out of the first four games, they are the group of animatronics that gets the least attention. Like, they weren't even in the iconic thank you picture. What makes me feel even worse for them is their lack of overall importance. Think about it, out of every group of animatronics, they are probably the least liked. The originals are iconic, the toys are also very popular, for unique reasons. The nightmares are still a big mystery and have people talking, the fun times are fan favorites, the scrap gang are the big finale, and the glam rocks, you get the picture. And what I think is the main reason these guys are so forgotten is that they just don't have much relevance. What we first thought they were are probably what they still are, hallucinations. There are theories that these phantoms are the agony or remnant of the originals, but if so, then what are the shadows? Now, to me, these guys are definitely hallucinations. The Fazbear Fright story, what we found, outright confirms this. Next. Okay, here's a good one. The Nightmare Animatronics. FNAF 4 is probably the least solved game out of the entire franchise. We know just enough not to make the game a black hole in the timeline, but also not enough to make any real sense. The most prominent theory for the nightmares is that they were created through the Sound Illusion disc. The idea is that after made these endoskeletons that would use brain stuff to turn into nightmares, and would stop the crying child from going to Fredbear's. And that sounds pretty reasonable, but if you think about it, holes start to form. In the Fazbear Fright story out of stock, it's shown that Plush Trap was a real toy that was altered to have human body parts. I think that what this story is trying to tell us is that Plush Trap in the games is similar to the one in that story. But what that means, I have no idea. Then there's Nightmare, probably the least explained animatronic that actually matters. Shut up, Yendo fans. If the other animatronics are fake, then is Nightmare too? If so, why would Afton build this? But the other option is that Nightmare is a metaphor for death, but Nightmare has a brain inside of it. What does that mean? And honestly, I have no idea. I think that after fans were able to rip apart the first three games so easily, Scott wanted to make FNAF 4 a little hard to understand, but he went too far and the game is a complete mystery. Now it seems that Nightmare and Nightmare Yon are being retconned into the same character, and I think that as of right now, we currently don't have enough information to understand this game. As Matt Pat said about the secret boss in Fury's Vengeance, The real final boss of this whole damn series is figuring out what FNAF 4 was trying to tell us. Like a lot of things from Sister Location, the mini arenas are weird, and I actually have a lot to say about these guys. They're these perfectly functioning animatronics that have tiny endoskeletons. In Night 4's Sister Location, they attack you while you're in the Springlock suit. This implies that they're sentient to some extent. More on that in a minute. So in Sister Location, the fun time's whole thing is that they use Michael as a skin suit and leave the underground facility. Then we have the Fazbear Fright story, Room for One More, where the mini arenas go inside of a human body to escape the underground facility. Fazbear Fright stories are always used to solve some minor mystery from the games. The 
Fun times going inside of a human and escaping the facility is something we already knew. So why would there be a story about this? It's unclear at the end of the game if the mini arenas are part of Ennard. You wouldn't think that they would, but they're nowhere to be seen after Ennard is created. Same thing with the Biddy Bears. However, in the FNAF 6 Egg Baby secret, we can see that Molten Freddy is only made of Ballora, Funtime Freddy, and Funtime Foxy. And we can assume that the mini arenas wouldn't just leave the baby. This says to me that the mini arenas weren't included inside of Ennard because they aren't sentient. They don't have a soul, remnant, or agony inside of them. Back to Fazbear Frights, we learn that the mini arenas are just as complex as the fun times. They're capable of moving and acting completely separate from each other. And I think I might know what the Fazbear Fright story is trying to tell us when we simply look at the design of the mini arenas. They're pretty weird for dolls. They have a pretty normal body, but the face is completely blank. This is because they're made to look like modeling dolls from an art class. Remember, the whole point of Circus Baby's Pizza World was to kidnap children. Everything within the walls of this restaurant is made for that sole purpose. My idea is that the mini arenas are kind of like Blank from Five Nights at Candy's. Kids could buy a mini arena, draw a face on it, and take it home. In the Fazbear Fry story, the mini arenas keep saying, Take me home with you. They don't ask to leave, they specifically ask to be taken to the night guard's house. The story continues to state that the mini arenas are very cute and have an innocent voice. Something that would be very convincing, like it was for the night guard in the story. What I think the mini arenas are is that they're made to be taken home with children and would work to get the children back into the restaurant as soon as possible. If the fun times miss them the first time, a second chance is always welcome for them. The only thing I'm not too sure about is why they attack you in night 4. My best guess is that they're influenced by Baby or Ballora during that night. It doesn't exactly sound right, especially since Ballora has been hit by the scooper then, but I'm not exactly sure what else it could be. I really wasn't expecting to talk about the mini arenas for that long, but as I wrote the script everything just started fitting into place for me. People never talk about the mini arenas. Looking up what are the mini arenas on YouTube doesn't provide any theories. Even Reddit is scarce. This is why I made this video, to finally explain things people won't. People just don't give some of these guys the time of day just because they don't immediately make sense or have complex layers. They're in this middle point between no information and a lot of it where people just don't care. Anyway, time for one of the most forgotten FNAF animatronics of all time. I am going to be completely honest, this is the only reason I'm making this video. Nobody, and I mean NOBODY, ever talks about the Biddy Babs. But not too long ago, I cracked the case. Let's get right into this one, cause I'm excited. The Biddy Babs are in a similar boat to the Mini Arenas. They're not sentient, and they aren't part of Ennard. For the longest time, I had no idea what the Biddy Babs were, or what purpose they had. But after I read the story Lonely Freddy, everything clicked. So basically, Lonely Freddies are these small little bears that would follow around lonely kids at Fazbear locations. This is what the Biddy Babs are. Let me explain. Like I said before, everything in Circus Baby's Pizza World is made to kidnap kids. But the thing is, these animatronics are huge. And surely, because of their size, they would be very noticeable off their show stage. So they could only leave the stage if the child was in a room alone. How would they know this? Biddy Babs. Biddy Babs would follow around lonely children, and once that child was alone in a room, they would signal that to the other fun times who would come and get them. But why did they attack you in sister location, you might be asking? Well, it's the very specific way that they attack you in that game that makes this theory so believable. While you hide under a desk, they try to move the door to get you out. You see, the fun times are very big, so if any child were to hide in a small space, they'd be pretty safe. But the Biddy Babs are very small, and they can easily follow a child into any hiding spot and drag them out. Just like the desk and sister location. This is what the Biddy Babs are. Check mate. So I once thought that Electrobab is like this epic meme character because they have absolutely no importance or relevance at all whatsoever. They are probably the single most forgotten animatronic from the main games. But I soon realized that Electrobab wasn't even canon. Their only appearance is in the sister location Custom Night, which isn't even canon. And unlike Yendo, this is it. This character was made solely to fill a slot in the custom night. And that's it. End of story. <laughs> bye bye. I think Bon Bon is actually pretty self-explanatory. He's just a puppet on Funtime's Freddy's hand. Is he possessed? Probably not. He acts solely on his programming in Night 3. But then, what is Bonnet? At first I thought this was an Electrobab situation, and that the character wasn't even canon. But she appears in UCN, meaning she is. However, this is her only notable appearance. Her having cameos and help wanted in Security Breach doesn't really mean much. So the only thing I have to say is that Bonnet is likely just a swap out character for Bon Bon. 
When Funtime Freddy is sent off to a party through Circus Babies Entertainment and Rentals, he can either bring along Bon Bon or Bonnet, depending on if it's a boys or girls party. Pretty simple, right? Well, get ready for the next one. You've been trolled, you've been trolled, yes, you've probably been told. Lulbit. <sighs> Lulbit makes no sense in this series. There is not a single thing I can find out about this character. Every appearance Lulbit has is just an easter egg. Any theory I found was just grasping at straws. There isn't anything about this character that explains them. At first, I was quick to call Yendo non-canonical. His only appearance is in the sister location Custom Night, which is in canon. Case closed, right? No. Yendo can appear as an easter egg while in Funtime Foxy's auditorium, and since sister location is completely reliable unlike the first four games, Yendo is undeniably canon. I hate Yendo. It's just such a random inclusion that I feel like might be important, but also feel like we'll never see this character again. He's just an easter egg that will be speculated about for years to come. Unlike other easter egg characters like JJ the Shadows and Sparky the Dog, Yendo feels like he was included solely for theory fodder. It's just something to get people talking with no actual answer in mind from Scott. But there's nothing that can actually be done about it right now, so let's just see what information we have available. My first instinct was to check the ultimate guide, so I flipped through the book to the very last page where Yendo's description lies. The following is Yendo described by the ultimate guide. <clears throat> A burly endoskeleton capable of supporting the Funtime animatronics. What? That's it. That's all this has to say? Well, thank you, Ultimate Guide. That was very helpful. Wait a minute. Read that sentence again. Capable of supporting the Funtime animatronics. That's some weird wording. Yendo can support all of the Funtimes, not just Funtime Freddy. Okay. What other info do we have? Yendo's only appearance is in Night 3 of Sister Location. Yendo can be found in Funtime Foxy's room. In the sister location custom night, he appears and reappears like Golden Freddy. I'm gonna be honest guys, I have no idea what any of this means. I really don't want to throw out a theory right now, because there's just so little information that anything I can come up with is just going to be completely made up. But here's the information I could find. If you know anything I missed, let me know in the comments. I know this is a pretty anticlimactic way to end this video, but I just don't know what else to say. Sorry to let you down. Well, uh, I guess that's it for now. I mean, maybe I'll make a part two later, but who knows? I gotta say, though, I cannot wait until my classmates find this video and I get bullied for the rest of high school. That's gonna be really fun. <laughs> guys, I just like the silly bear. Leave me alone. If you guys like this video, I would definitely be okay with making another video on this series. I mean, I could review the books, the different games. I could trash on Security Breach. No one's done that yet. The only thing I really don't want to do is read the Fazbear Fright books. Dear God, anything but that.